This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are glad that you have chosen to worship with us here at Horizon. We have a few opportunities to worship and I invite you, if you are watching us on YouTube, I invite you to come join us after the service on Zoom as we have a time of fellowship, a time where we are able to share with one another our prayers and concerns and a time where we are able to be a church body. Also, we have a wonderful Bible study opportunity that we are just started again this past week where we had several members of our congregation join us and we are going to be going through the book of James. A book of James, the reason why we picked the book of James is because James is was living at a time where the church was no long, was not able to meet in person. The Jewish Christians were no longer allowed to meet in the in the synagogues and similar to where we are now is we're not able to meet together but god's message is still able to flow and god's message is still able to move through us so i invite you to join us for that and i also just encourage you to come and make worship a regular part of your life because god god desires our worship and he invites us to join with him to connect with him through worship so as we begin this time of worship, let us pray to God and ask him to anoint our worship. Ask him to come and show us who he is through our worship. Let us pray. Father God, this is your day and your worship is our priority today. Lord, may you calm our hearts and minds and may your Holy Spirit move through us. Give us the grace that we need to worship you fully today. We praise you and we praise your holy name. Come, enter in, and show us who you are. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
praise the Son. Praise, praise the Spirit, three in one. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Bye. 
study in Isaiah, this is a slightly different part of this message where instead of there being this hopeful or looking to message, Isaiah spends about 11 chapters going through the different judgments that are going to be on the nations. The problem is, is that when we look away, when we turn our eyes from worshiping God, then we become like the world and we are doomed just like the rest of the world. And if it weren't but for the grace of God, if it weren't for God's loving mercy and grace, we would be destroyed. Just as Isaiah warns Israel. Today we are going to look at one specific prophecy, one specific message against the land of the desert by the sea. The desert by the sea is not a Jewish nation. Desert by the sea is a nation that has done what is against God. And it is our opportunity and our duty to look inside our hearts, look inside our minds, look inside our very souls. What is it that we are doing that is not leading us to God? God desires for each and every one of us to give to him fully what belongs to him, and that is our worship. And if we give our worship, if we give our time, if we give our value to anything other than worshiping God with all of our heart, mind, and soul, with everything that we do, we fall short of that ethic that he desires of us, and we need a savior. Fortunately, we have been given a Savior. Last week, we talked about that branch of Jesse that God is offering to us. Salvation through Christ Jesus. But we have to be on guard. We have to be constantly looking into ourselves. And what am I doing? Am I giving all of my worship to God? Or am I giving my worship to somebody or something else? God desires all of all of us. He doesn't desire just a part of us. God, our worship to God cannot just be a fraction of what we do, but it must be all that we do. Otherwise, we have to listen and take heed. Look at what these words are actually saying. God wants us and giving ourselves to anything other than him is us saying that I align with Babylon. I align with this world. And that is exactly what God wanted to warn Israel of. Don't align yourself with anything other than God. So I invite you to join in. Let us look deeper into the word. And let us pray. Father God, today is your day. Our hearts are your hearts. Take us. Use us. May we be the servants that you need us to be. Praise be your holy name. Holy are you. Turn our hearts and minds to you as we look at your word. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to Isaiah 21, verses 1 through 10. A prophecy against the desert by the sea. Like whirlwinds sweeping through the Southland, an invader comes from the desert, from a land of terror. A dire vision has been shown to me. The traitor betrays, the looter takes loot. Elam, attack! Media, lay siege! I will bring an end to all the groaning she caused. At this my body is racked with pain. Pangs seize me, like those of a woman in labor. I am staggered by what I hear. I am bewildered by what I see. My heart falters. Fear makes me tremble. The twilight I longed for has become a horror to me. They set the tables. They spread the rugs. They eat. They drink. Get up, you officers. Oil the shields. 
This is what the Lord says to me. Go post a lookout and have him report what he sees. When he sees chariots with teams of horses, riders on donkeys or riders on camels, let him be alert, fully alert. And the lookout shouted, Day after day, my Lord, I stand on the watchtower. Every night I stay at my post. Look, here comes a man in a chariot with a team of horses. And he gives back the answer, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. All the images of its gods lie shattered on the ground. My people who are crushed on the threshing fo floor. I tell you what I have heard from the Lord Almighty, from the God of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This passage has multi-facets to it. This passage has three main sections. One section where the vision is seen. And the vision elicits certain behaviors, thoughts, and patterns in Isaiah. He is disturbed by what he sees. Because what is happening is going to be destructive. It's going to be damaging. It's going to hurt. It's going to cause pain. And Isaiah concentrates and tells about his pain. In the next section of this passage, Isaiah is talking to the people and saying, this is what we need to do. We need to be prepared. We need to be on guard. We need to look at what the effects, what the issues are going to be surrounding the upcoming judgment because of our failings. But then, then Isaiah turns and he turns to a passage, this section where he talks about the hope, the hope that exists because God is going to always follow through with his word. And that is the hope that which we put our hearts and minds because we know that Jesus came. We know that Jesus came to give us a hope, a future, a life eternal with God. And it is that that we need to focus on and put our hearts and minds upon. So let us look at these three areas where God is calling to us. The first part of this passage, the thing that we need to pull away is that the results of sin is death. The results of sin, the results of pulling away from God is destruction. The results of pulling away from God is the fact that everything that we know and love and care about. If it is of this world, it will fade away. And therefore we must put our hearts and minds and focus upon what is eternal, not what is fleeting. The hard part about that for us is that we don't fully comprehend who God is in the midst of all of this. Most of us, when we go about our days, while we earnestly believe that we are following what God wants us to do, oftentimes we do so without consulting God's word about what we're doing. Or we put too much emphasis on things and our thoughts that we have developed by being a part of this world. But God wants everything from us. And that includes our minds and our souls. And we must be able to see God in all the things that we are doing. Certainly, when we look into our hearts, if there is anything that is not from God, we must flee from it. It is hard to do because we have made attachments to things in this world. We've made attachments to things that aren't of God. We've made attachments to things that 
have led us astray, have led us not to consider fully who God is in the midst of our world. So as we go about our day, as we go about our lives, we must consider what is from God and what is going to be laid waste and what is going to be destroyed. Because those things that aren't from God, those things that lead us away from God, those things will fade, those things will be destroyed, those things will be no more. So it is important for us to focus on that which is from God. And the only way we can do that is by giving God all of our heart, mind, and soul. To be honest with ourselves. To be earnest in our prayer lives. And to seek God's word at all times, in all situations. And not just the parts of God's word that we like, but like this passage. We must look to this part and where Isaiah is not speaking to a group of religious zealots, but he's speaking to a people that just need to turn back to who God is. That brings us to the second section of this, where God is giving us an action. He's telling us what to do. He's telling us to be on guard, to go look. Instead of sitting back and laying, lying idle, we must actively pursue God actively be searching him out go stand on that watchtower go look for where god is we can all find god in all of the areas of our life but we must be vigilant we must be diligent and we must seek after who he wants us to be not only now but at all times not only during election years, but at all times. God wants us to look after him. How do we do that? The theologian Karl Barth often said that the best way to pursue finding out who God is is by having the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the next. And then we can be looking for ways where God is working and where God wants us to be. Now, most of us don't have a newspaper, although in our congregation, I know that there are several of us that do. But we do. We're constantly bombarded with news. And so let us, when we look at what's happening in the news, let us consult that with the Bible in our hand. And we'll find that God is moving. God is acting. But we must be looking for those areas. Because God wants us to be a part of what he's doing in the world. So we must go look and seek out who he is. Prepare our hearts. Oil our shields. The way we do that is by seeking God in his word. And seeking God in this world and if we are seeking God where he is and where he is acting in this world then we will see an abundance of grace an abundance of mercy an abundance of where God is going to fulfill his word and if that's not good news I don't know what is God promises us that he's sending us a savior we have evidence that God's Savior was sent in, in the form of Christ Jesus. And Jesus said that he is coming again. So we see throughout history, God time after time after time fulfills his word. And the fulfillment of his word is hope. So even in the midst of this passage, even in the midst of this 11 chapter section where Isaiah is talking about judgment. There is hope. Because that hope is who God is. God's character does not change in the midst of all of this. God's character comes through because God desires for each and every one of us to worship with him, to be glorified by our worship. We want God wants us to engage with him. He wants us to be a part of his worship. 
He wants us to be a part of his ministry in this world. He wants us to be a part of his kingdom and his kingdom building. So brothers and sisters, let us join in with who Christ wants us to be. Let us join in with who God wants us to be. And let us worship God with all of our heart, mind, and soul. And so, let us pray to God asking Him to show us where we are called to be in this world. Let us pray. Father God, we thank You for this day. We thank You for giving us the opportunity to worship You with all of who you are. We praise your holy name. We seek your holy face. For you are mighty. You are holy. You are worthy of all worship and praise. Lord, use us to bring glory to your kingdom. Use us to bring praise to your name. Use us to be your people in this world. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The sun will rise, the sun will rise, bringing life to the earth as it springs from the ground. The sun will rise, the sun will rise Won't you dry all your tears Lay a burden down Won't you dry all your tears Lay a burden message of hope comes through because he allows us to have direct access to who he is in this world and he allows us that access through prayer so as we engage with God today may we engage his prayer him with our prayers and offering up to him who we are so let us pray father God we thank you for this day we thank you for looking out for us lord we pray that as we look out for who you are in this world lord we pray for your peace your hope your mercy your justice to come through lord you have called us to your mission in this world you've called us to be your kingdom builders so may we take heed to that call and may we listen to who you desire us to be Lord, we offer up our concerns right now. Lord, we give you praise for the things that you have done for us. And we give you that praise right now. Lord, we know that your work with us is not done. And that for us to continue to work with you and for you, we must listen to your word. We must listen to you and 
we come to you in prayer. We seek your face. And Lord, even when we don't have the words to pray, you taught us how to pray when you taught your disciples. And we pray that prayer right now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours and thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
directly from God that even in the midst of the darkest day, God is still there with us. God is still there for us. And God wants us to go out for Him in the world. So when we go out, when we go to the places that we go, when we go from this place of worship, we don't go forgetting what we have heard, forgetting what God has spoken to us, but we go knowing full and well that God has a mission for us to go out and be His people in the world so that we can be those that bring peace in the midst of chaos, that we can bring hope in the midst of destructive sin, because God loves us and God so loved the world that he sent his son so that wherever we go, God has already gone before us and God all, always has our back and he's always right beside us, no matter what. So we have the confidence that we are going out serving a majestic God so wherever we go, we know and we can go in peace. Amen, church.